Welcome back to Fudge Muppet, my name is Scott and we love the Elder Scrolls. It was what this channel started on back in 2013. And it began as just us sharing our passion for the characters we created in the game. And back then, man, I had no idea how long the wait would be for Elder Scrolls 6. We have been balls deep in Elder Scrolls lore for so long. Nary a stone unturned, but for the drip feed of new lore added by a yearly ESO expansion. The Elder Scrolls desperately needs a new game. Starfield, their very first IP in over 25 years, has been a great success. Skyrim in space is a neat catchphrase to describe it, but really it is far more like a mix of Fallout 3 or New Vegas and Oblivion in terms of gameplay feel. It is a Bethesda RPG through and through, set in space, and we love it. They've also made their intentions clear that they intend to support the game with updates, DLC, and modding support. There's lots of exciting stuff in store. And if you are loving Starfield, then do be sure to subscribe because we have all kinds of content coming your way, including role-playing builds for which we are known. But this brings us to Elder Scrolls 6. Ultimately, this is Bethesda's next focus. Can you believe that it was over five years ago that the teaser trailer for it was released? Kind of crazy. I used to think, imagine if I had kids before Elder Scrolls 6. Then I thought, well, I guess I'll have young kids for Elder Scrolls 6. Now I have two daughters that will be in the midst of primary school by the time Elder Scrolls 6 comes out, which in the best case scenario it seems is 2028. Keep those fingers crossed, because I'd hope so. I guess they don't have to make a new engine this time, but what can Starfield tell us about Elder Scrolls 6? If you've enjoyed Bethesda games for a long while, you can track the progress of their design decisions bleeding across franchises. For example, when Bethesda took on the Fallout franchise and created Fallout 3, it had perks like the previous games in the series, Fallout 1 and Fallout 2. And so as we got to Skyrim, we also got for the first time the introduction of perks into the Elder Scrolls because it worked so well in Fallout 3. Previously, extra effects or abilities, things like a backflip for acrobatics in Oblivion, came from simply leveling the acrobatic skill. There are other examples like this, but for this reason, I think it's hard to imagine that Bethesda won't be pulling heavy from Starfield, learning what works and what doesn't, and implementing these lessons into Elder Scrolls 6. For the same reasons I am loving Starfield, I am more confident on Bethesda's return to form and ability to hit Elder Scrolls 6 out of the park. Starfield has the implementation of backgrounds and traits, as well as the choices and lots of dialogue options, all of which is on par with Fallout New Vegas. T to reiterate, that is that the options are on par, not necessarily the writing itself, Though even still, it is the best Bethesda has done in my opinion. Consistently, the backgrounds, traits, skills I have, and even the factions I've joined have opened up new dialogue options and unique experiences across my several characters. This attention to detail and vastness of options applied to the Elder Scrolls just gets me giddy. Being able to have your chosen race, a background, which factions you belong to, and your skills factor into dialogue on top of a persuasion system, which I am sure will be implemented into an Elder Scrolls 6 just sounds so awesome. Starfield has the Bethesda RPG formula, but done better. Imagine if this was in Skyrim. For example, I could pick a Wood Elf, which opens up the options for dialogue that a Bosma may know about. On top of this, I pick a background, which confers several skill bonuses at the start. Say I pick Knight. And so I would have all these dialogue options open up regarding my background, allowing me to use unique dialogue amongst other Knights or Lords, and allow me to, in dialogue, use my Knighted status to gain entrance to places I would otherwise need to sneak into or require a silver tongue. On top of that, imagine the whole host of traits that could be available. Things including various religious and cultural backgrounds, some of which would be exclusive to certain races, as well as a bunch of others. They could even bring back star signs on top, but I imagine they are more gameplay-oriented bonuses rather than role-playing. Then again, imagine some really cool options that become available in the character creator if you have certain combinations. For example, say you choose Argonian as a race, and if you pick the shadow as your star sign, then you can choose the shadow scale background. Perhaps that fast tracks you to join the Dark Brotherhood and, and comes up in assassin related quests. A really quick way to sample how this kind of thing could be implemented in Elder Scrolls 6 
Go to Starfield, play a character who has both the gangster and neon street rat traits, and you'll see how much it improves your role-playing experience of that area. Character creation is one of the most personal, creative, and rewarding experiences in RPGs, and I really think they've done a great job in Starfield, and they should really just double down on this for Elder Scrolls 6. This is also why I think the Bethesda RPG formula is so successful and can work its wiles on you even if you are aware of its flaws. Bethesda synthesizes lots of systems and individual individual game elements really well, and then wraps them up in this addictive bundle which has been every single Bethesda game, minus the Black Sheep of the Family, the travesty that was Fallout 76. But that aside, often if you take every single element of any of their games and stack them against another game, often one that has a particular focus, then it will mostly lose out. And there could be clear improvements to be made, often work that does get done by modders. However, a single element, say building a house or gunplay or what have you, is not how a game is experienced. A game is the sum of the parts, and that is what makes Bethesda games great. Want a fantasy RPG? The Witcher is awesome, but you have to be Geralt, and you have to, with some exceptions, wield two swords and be a monster hunter. But in Skyrim, you can be an orc or a Khajiit, you can ignore the main quest and go off the rails, you can be a thief, go join the College of Winterhold and Master Magic, do whatever you like, insert your own creativity onto the character. Determine your own experience. Is the Dark Brotherhood Assassin experience as good as an Assassin experience in a game like Dishonored? No, but you can be an assassin and then go build a house, adopt a kid, go dungeon delving in your spare time and become a vampire even, work with a Daedric Prince. And that is the appeal of Bethesda's RPGs. It's lots of things stitched together, lots of options providing you an immense sandbox to play in. I think this also factors into people's enjoyment of Starfield itself. There are just no other games that provide this exact kind of experience. I think there are many who did come into Starfield expecting a curated galaxy exploration game where that is the main focus of the game. And to be fair, I don't think Bethesda had the clearest marketing on this, but then everyone got a Bethesda RPG in space, which for people like us is amazing and exactly what we wanted. In fact, it was my big concern with Starfield. I was very cynical and wary of the game before it released, and I really wasn't digging the NASA punk aesthetic, plus I was salty knowing that this was between me and Elder Scrolls 6, but the game has changed my mind, and I truly think if you love the previous Fallout and Elder Scrolls games by Bethesda, then you will love Starfield. But I also think there is an adjustment period with Starfield because of one drastic change, and that is it spans the settled systems with multiple planets separated by space versus a single traversable map. And this does have a different feel, for better in some aspects and for worse in others. But this is the trade-off that is pretty much essential to the Bethesda RPG formula when applied to a space game. Flying from one system to another manually, if it were possible, is not fun. There's nothing to do in empty space. Even No Man's Sky has a hyperdrive to take you from system to system because as you would imagine, the empty void of space would not actually be fun to travel through for 10 minutes or more of game time. It's not like traveling across Skyrim where you might actually come across something interesting. Now mind you, I'm not kidding myself. Being able to travel from planet to planet within a star system freely, like in No Man's Sky, would be better for sure. However, it isn't essential to the core of what a Bethesda RPG is. Sometimes I feel as if it's similar to complaining that Mass Effect, a sci-fi RPG, doesn't let you fly the Normandy between planets, or at all. These are RPG games in a sci-fi setting, not specifically space games like No Man's Sky or Star Citizen. But Elder Scrolls 6 won't have this problem because, well, it's on the single landmass of Tamriel. One big thing to consider is the scale. There is no turning back. I mean, even for myself, the cities, for example, feel much better to me filled with random citizens alongside more specific NPCs as opposed to the small village of Whiterun and Solitude. Of course, these games are products of their time, but I would expect that for Elder Scrolls 6, the cities will be like this. Like Novigrad and The Witcher, cities feeling massive is really 
cool. There are so many things from Starfield that we could expect in The Elder Scrolls 6. Take settlement building, for example. Skyrim dipped its toes in the water with the Hearthfire DLC, and Fallout 4 doubled down on this, and while the settlement building was really cool, it felt as if a lot of the potentially interesting locations just became settlement spots, and the whole system felt more pushed on you with the whole Minutemen thing. Whereas in Starfield, you can build a settlement anywhere, and it feels far more optional, which is how I like it. But in The Elder Scrolls 6, if we have the ability to set up a camp anywhere, or build a house or castle anywhere, it would be pretty amazing. There are lore and in-universe implications for this, but that's also awesome. For example, maybe you can't actually start building a fort or castle-like structure unless you have some sort of Thane equivalent title. Like you need to be a baron to have the rights to do that. Or perhaps you can try to do so illegally, but the ruler of the lands will send guards to arrest you. To be able to be a knight type character, to work your way to the title of baron and build a castle for yourself is really awesome. Or hell, depending on how far they take the options, maybe you could even through some of the faction storylines become king of a city or some other powerful position that warrants you an actual city castle. Like imagine if in Skyrim you could actually become the Jarl of Whiterun after deposing him if you sided with the Stormcloaks. Becoming a king is some pretty intense fantasy role playing, a hell of a power fantasy. Same deal with making some sort of criminal hideout or den. You could hire bandits and actually be a bandit leader, but guards or other mercenaries will try and take it out, but at the same time you gain gold and plunder that your bandits go out and get for you. There is just so much role-playing opportunity for a settlement system in Elder Scrolls 6. Another precedent that has been set, or rather reset, is maneuverability of your character. Through the gymnastics skill in Starfield, acrobatics has essentially made a return, so you can play a sneaky ninja character, and the boost pack has obviously completely transformed traversal in this respect. And so in an Elder Scrolls 6, I can absolutely imagine that an acrobatic skill will be returning, and let's also think about the implications for this in terms of magic and mounts. The Levitate spell should absolutely have a return, and now the precedent has been set with the boost pack in Starfield, I absolutely expect Levitate and other sorts of maneuverability magic to be there. Boosts to acrobatics or slow fall type spells shouldn't functionally be all that different to a low gravity world in Starfield. So I can actually visualize the implementation of this, but also think about the possibility of unique mounts, like griffins, which were introduced into the lore in ESO. Imagine Thalmor soldiers riding griffins, shooting at you with a bow, or hurling magic. Sky combat doesn't seem so unlikely anymore, considering that they have made space battles a thing in Starfield. Where vultures anyone? Imagine being able to turn into one and fly around the map. And look, that is the other big thing to re-emphasize, the scale. They can go big, they've done it with Starfield, though it is segmented across planets, but all put in the one world map, it could be incredible. And along with that, I think it's very important to have adequate traversal options. Horses and other mounts, magic, boats, especially if it takes place around the Iliac Bay area. And look, I'd love to see some Black Flag tier battles at sea for pirate characters. But we'll see what happens. Another thing, Starfield has a ridiculous amount of alien creatures spread across the galaxy, and when translated to Elder Scrolls terms, I absolutely expect them to have an expansive bestiary, and not only that, but tons of Daedra to summon. With ESO and its successive expansions, there have been many creatures added, and look, ultimately, it would just be so awesome to have an experience where you're running through expansive lands filled with diverse creatures, and you can summon all kinds of Daedra from across the various realms. I am really excited to see this scale applied to Elder Scrolls 6. And it's not only just the creatures, but the diversity of environments in Starfield is staggering. There are so many moments where I just come to some tropical forest planet and just sit in awe. So many Morrowind tier alien environments as well. There is a lot, and Bethesda has proved they can do it. So with an Elder Scrolls 6, a multi-province game seems possible to pull off, and even if not, using scale, they could expand a single province to massive proportions with all kinds of smaller biomes that transition between the larger ones, like some Nile River tier marshes in Hammerfell, heading through a desert into some badlands, then carving through some savannah-like lands, dry forests, and then cutting through some mountains and entering into a paradise like a jungled coast, and then of course into the sea. There's just 
So much possibility, that was just following a river for example. Starfield also approached the main story in a way that I feel many Elder Scrolls fans like us have been asking for. They vastly lowered the initial stakes and made it so that the player doesn't feel pressured to run through the main story and instead you are given the breathing room to just explore and immerse yourself in the setting, to go navigate side quests and join factions. I love a good power fantasy but for me it doesn't have to be connected to the main story. I don't have to be a dragonborn. In fact many of our role playing builds are about specifically avoiding being a dragonborn. Dragonborn. I like having to work for the power fantasy. I really like the ability to be a nobody, a blank slate for your own creativity who is then thrust upon the world. On successive playthroughs of Starfield, I've often just ignored the main quest after delivering the first artifact to Sarah, and it's just so damn fun to go in and then be a space pirate or a bounty hunter. And in the fantasy setting of The Elder Scrolls 6, there are so many possibilities. By the way, just to clarify, I enjoy stakes, but I like the stakes to pick up in the story. The suspense should build to a peak of an act and then lull again for some breathing room and then it picks up again and so on until the climax at the end. Otherwise, it can just railroad you constantly with this, oh my god, quick, dragons are coming, go, 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 and it doesn't feel like you have the moment to just relax and explore what the vast open world has to offer. And this is the peak Bethesda experience. It's the open world. It's the variety of things to interact with. The peak experience of Bethesda RPGs has never been the main quest. It's always the creativity and options that the player can engage in. And I, for one, am really happy they had this approach for Starfield, and I do hope it continues. The potential for Elder Scrolls 6 is huge, but it's going to be a long wait, so settle in. However, if these leaks of an Oblivion remaster come to fruition, there will be some more nostalgia to bask in while we wait. Years ago, Michael and I made a video called The Ideal Elder Scrolls 6, a big video detailing things we wanted to see, and later we made an Ideal Elder Scrolls 6 in a Hammerfell setting, so you can check those out if you like, but I am really thinking at some point we should make a new Ideal Elder Scrolls 6, because now that we have seen what they can do in Starfield, my mind will have changed a lot. But hop down into the comments and let me know what you think, what you might want to see in an Elder Scrolls 6. There is plenty of great stuff in Starfield that would translate to the Elder Scrolls 6 very nicely. Do be sure to subscribe to the channel, we have plenty of Starfield content on the way, including the Bounty Hunter build tomorrow, and many more builds after that. And we will be revisiting the Elder Scrolls from time to time, but man, we are just really enjoying something fresh for once. Thanks so much for all the support. My name is Scott, and I'll be back to nerd out with you again real soon.